And then there were two. Ben Cleveland and Brandon Stevens are the only ones left because now it's official that Adafe Away is officially, officially a Baltimore Raven. A Baltimore Raven. There you go, my phone. Anyway, he signed his rookie deal today. So now he can take part in training camp officially because if you're a rookie, well, if you just not under contract, period, rookie or not, but if you're a rookie, and you don't sign your rookie deal, OTAs, oh, you're good to go. You're good to go for OTAs. Come through for OTAs. Do your thing. But camp time, no, sir. No, sir. Um, and it, it just seems like the draft. Adafi Away was obviously a first-round pick from the Baltimore Ravens, the 31st overall pick uh, in the uh, 2021 draft. And it, it seems like the draft was so long ago, man. Seems like it was ages ago. But I always remember thinking, like, there's no, like, these are the Ravens now. There's no, and let me know if some of y'all thought the same thing, but there's no way that these dudes are about to really use two first round picks. I know, I know about Hayden Hurst and Lamar Jackson. But I was like, still, we know how much Ravens love their draft picks. Like, they love, like, way more than a lot of other teams, they love them draft picks. Like, not, I, 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 they ain't picking at 27 and 31. And they picked at 27 and 31. But I loved it. And Adafi Away, of course, um, a lot of people look at uh, the lack of productions that came from uh, his collegiate career, especially uh, his last season. But like, and we were just talking about this in one of the Twitter spaces yesterday. Shout out to them fellas. Shout out to Jacob Vogel. Shout out, shout out to them boys, man. Um, but they, they, they brought out a really good point that when it comes to production, when, if you just look at numbers for a player – Especially a defensive player, especially a pass rusher, numbers do not ever tell the whole story. You can't just look at numbers, man. And it, it feels like, and I'm not like taking a shot at anybody, but sometimes it seems like that's what a lot of uh, the, the experts and analysts, they tend to do. But again, I feel like that's because they, they can't sit there and watch every single team, watch every single player. So they just get a stat sheet and, oh, okay, they got this number, these numbers, da 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 and they go based off of that. But when you actually look at film, this is why you got to watch the games. If you actually watch the games, you can see a player's impact, stuff that the stat sheet won't show because stats don't tell it all. And that goes for offense or defense, but certainly for pass rushers because the number that's glorified is obviously the sacks. And it's been sometimes where even me, myself, I've got caught up in, in, in the number of total sex. But then I had to say, wait a minute. I had to take a little step back and be like, wait, well, is it really all about sex? But, and it's not. It's not. Because there could be a player that is crazy disruptive. Getting plenty of QB hits, getting plenty of pressure on the quarterback, forcing the quarterback to bad throws. But they don't have not one sack on the game. Not one. But... That in that same game, that quarterback could have thrown three or four interceptions. Why? Because he felt pressure. And that pressure came in from that particular player. And that forced him to throw the ball away. That forced him while he was throwing, he got hit. So he threw it in an awkward mo motion. And then Marcus Peters goes, Koo. and then Marlon Humphrey goes, Koo. and then Jimmy Smith goes, Koo. or then Tay Tay goes, Koo. and then Sean Wade goes, Koo. Deshaun Elliott. Hey, Deshaun Elliott, it's time, baby. It's time. But you, you get my point. So just because somebody doesn't have all these sacks, their impact on the game, it goes beyond that. And that's what this could be for Adafe away. And as of right now, as of right here, right now, he is going to have a big role. Why? Because as of right here, right now, uh, 1.32 p.m. Friday, June 11th, the Ravens have not signed any additional veteran pass rushes. They haven't. Because a lot of us been talking about Justin Houston. There have been plenty of conversations about Melvin Ingram. And then, of course, everybody else in between and whatnot. But Ravens haven't made any moves there yet. Now, I fully, 1,000% expect them to. But they haven't done anything yet. And with them not doing anything yet, then Adafi away. Dalen Hayes. You're up. Yup. And then, of course, you got Tyus Bowser. You got Sack Daddy, Jalen Ferguson, who's still looking to really make his mark on the NFL. 
And then you also got Pernell McPhee. So those, those are your edge guys as of right now. But you you, you just got to, you, you just know. You know that that's not going to be how the Ravens go into the season uh, with just those guys at the edge positions and outside linebacker, pass rush, all that good stuff. You just know. But Adafi away, uh, if they did go into it like that, I honestly wouldn't be mad. I would not be mad. But uh, I've said this before. If they did go into the season like that, the one thing that one of the things that I would be concerned about would be the youth. Now, how does youth become mature? How do they grow, especially as football players? They grow with experience. But it's nice to have a mentor along the way. It's nice to have somebody on the sidelines who's been there, done that, when they're showing you, hey, this is how you beat this guy. Look, look, he, he, this, he's weak right there. He don't got that strength to hold you like that. So hit him with that. Or hit him with that. And they're, they're telling him. And, and we love to see that during games. We love seeing that. When we're watching a broadcast of a game, or if you're there live at the game, which I know a lot of you will be this year, but when you're watching a game and you see the veteran talking to the young player, whether it's on offense or defense, and, and they're coaching them up. Because you can get so much coaching from coaching, but then you, you get a lot more from your peers too. Because sometimes, we, we've all been guilty of this before, I know myself I have, that when, say for instance, you're working at a job, and you got somebody that's training you, your trainer. Your trainer's teaching you stuff, saying, oh, this is how you do this, this is how you do that, and you're taking it in. You're like, okay, cool, I understand, I get it or whatever, but then you have a peer. You have somebody on your same level who understands it too and that's been there and that's done that and they can be like, well, hey, what the trainer is saying is right. They got respect for the trainer, but at the same time, they can show you another way of doing things or sometimes even a better way. And they, even when they speak to you, they can speak your language and something that you will understand a lot more. So with Adafi away and, and Dalen Hayes and just the whole group, I still do expect them to sign another guy, but if they don't, so be it. But back to what I was saying, one of my biggest fears would be if they do go young, which I don't have a problem with, but one of my concerns would be the knowledge of the game. Their knowledge of the game, their grasp of the game, because the NFL collegiate level is that's that's a beast. That's a beast of its own. But the NFL is a whole nother animal. It's a whole nother animal. And if you got teams like Kansas City running these misdirection screens, I wish Ravens would incorporate that. Those misdirection screens are so simple, but they are so pretty and they are so effective. Because Patrick, Mahal, I, I love when they do that. I hate when they do it to us, but I love when they do it. And remember in. Not Lamar's rookie season, but I think it was the following, the second season when we lost to the Chiefs, when we were down by like five, and we it was third down. Some of y'all remember, it was third down. This is for the game. We make a stop here, we got a chance to get the ball back and go for the win. We make all we got to do is make a stop. Chiefs ran a misdirection screen. Patrick Mahomes snap, snapped the ball. He faked it to the his left. He faked it to his left and turned around and threw the screen to his right. I think it was to LaShawn McCoy, I believe. But whoever it was, he faked it to his left, turned around, threw it to his right. Ravens defense bit hard on it. And that was the end of the game. So I just wish we could incorporate. But stuff like that, a rookie, young guys, they may not be able to diagnose that. And hey, maybe they might. But a veteran at that position, a veteran seeing stuff like that will have a much easier time diagnosing it now one thing when it comes to a veteran versus a rookie and this is not set in stone because different veterans they they have different abilities and whatnot but for some rookies they they may not have the knowledge of here because they obviously don't have the experience but their athleticism their speed that agility that youth they may be able to recover a lot faster than a veteran can possibly it's not set in stone but hey so, yeah, I just, um, I, I do expect the Ravens to make a move uh, for a veteran edge guy. Who that is, I mean, with Justin Houston, I mean, that's been a talk of so many Ravens fans. But it almost feels like one of those things that, I, I don't know, maybe it just doesn't happen anymore. Because it's, he's still out there, still a free agent, and nothing has been shaken. We ain't heard no visits, we ain't heard of nothing with Justin Houston whatsoever. So maybe the Ravens may have their eyes set on somebody else or whatever it is. Who knows? Anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And 
just like Adafi Away is when it comes to being uh, being unsigned, being the group that's the unsigned rookies, like Ben Cleveland and Stevens. I'm out.